so uh, we know what a demultiplexer is uh, this is a problem using demultiplexer so in the problem uh, it is given that f1 of abc equal to sigma m0146 f2 of abc equal to sigma m26 implement this using a demultiplexer when there are two questions first is when the outputs are complemented second is when outputs are not complemented okay so first we'll analyze the question so in the question you have two functions both function of abc so abc is naturally the input so we are writing the truth table from whatever is given in the question so in the question it is given a b c are the inputs so we wrote a b c from 0 to 7 then you have two outputs f1 and f2 so f1 and f2 are my two outputs so these are my inputs and these are my outputs so that much i know okay now uh, what is f1 f1 is 1 when input is 0 1 4 6 so 0 1 4 and 6 my f1 is 1 so in all the other cases my f1 is 0 normal SOP relation and f2 is 1 when uh, ABC is in the order of 2 and 6 so 2 and 6 others the output is 0 so so much we got from the question okay so which is the demultiplexer which you will be using in this particular case you have three select lines Three select lines means uh, the number of output lines will be 2 raised to 3 that is 8 uh, one input so it will be 1 by 8 demultiplexer okay 1 by 8 demultiplexer so we'll draw a multiplexer so there are two questions one is when the outputs are complemented the other is output not complemented so let's see when the outputs are not complemented first outputs are not complemented that is the case which we have dealt with till now so we have the 1 by 8 okay so that is abc 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and seven. So this is one by eight demux. Okay. So this much I have. So first is outputs are not complement. That is the regular case. Okay. In the regular case, this is how the demux will look like. Now what do we do? <coughs> Output should be one when 0 1 4 6 0 1 4 6 f1 in the case of f1 okay so when a b c is 0 my output should be 1 when so we are assuming that in all such cases all such sops my input is kept at 1 okay it is never 0 it is always kept at 1 so what do you mean by saying that Sigma M zero one four six is my F one. So that means that 
when my ABC is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 0, my F1 should be 1. F1 is an output. Here you have 8 outputs, 0 to 7. From that, you should get this F1 and F2. You have to reduce it to 2 functions, F1 and F2, such that this is satisfied. Okay. So, when ABC is 0, 0, 0, 0, what do we get at 0? If this is permanently kept at 1, here you will get a 1. If it is 0, 0, 1, what would you get at 1? You will get a 1 there. In all the other outputs, you will get a 0. When it is 0, 1, 0, you will get a 1 at 2. All the other outputs will be 0. 0, 1, 1, you will get a 1 at 3. All the other outputs is 0. Likewise, 1, 1, 1, you will get a, an output of 1 at 7. And all the other outputs will be 0. So, this is what we get. So, what do we need? We need F1, which is an output, to be 1. In which all cases? When the input is 0 or 1 or 4 or 6. When input is either of any of these combinations, my output should be 1. So, what is the gate which you can use to which these outputs can be connected so that the output can be 1? Okay, so how do we read this? F1 is 1 when my input combination that is ABC is either 0, 0, 0 or 0, 0, 1 or 1, 0, 0 or 1, 1, 0. Those are happening at 0, 1, 4 and 6. Right? When the input combinations are these, you will get a 1 at any of these outputs. So, what is the gate? It is an OR gate. So, if you give an OR gate and you give a 0 here, 1, 4 and 6 and if you take it like this, when A is 0, B is 0, C is 0, here you will have a 1, all the other 0, F1 will be 1. 0, 0, 1, here you will get a 1, all the other 0, F1 will be 1. 1, 1, 0, this OR gate will get a 1, output will be 0. Uh, output will be 1, all the other inputs are 0. So, that is F1. So, how do you get F2? You will have to uh, use another OR gate for F2. And what will be the input to the OR gate? It will be 2 and 6 as per the question. 2 and 6. Right? So, this is F2. So, when you give these combinations, 0, 0, 0 means F1 will be 1, F2 will be 0. 0, 0, 1, uh, F1 will be 1, F2 will be 0. 0, 1, 0, F1 will be 0, F2 will be 1. Likewise, this truth table you will get using this. So, this is how you implement a DMUX, sorry, an SOP using DMUX. So, this is the uh, one of the cases that is when outputs are not complemented. Now, if the outputs are complemented, now that is a special case and normally uh, all the demultiplexer ICs available are complemented. That is why we are considering this particular case. Outputs are complemented. So, in this particular case, all the outputs will be complemented 
and then only will we get the output. So outputs are complemented means what? Actually, we want sigma m 0, 1, 4, 6. So, in this particular Dmux, when the outputs are complemented and you are giving 0, 0, 0 at A, B, C, actually what should happen? What should happen is at 0, you should get a 1. But here, since the outputs are complemented, Wherever you should get a 1, you'll get a 0. So when it is 0, 0, 0, here you'll get a 0. 0, 0, 1 means here you'll get a 0. All the others are 1. Okay. So it's just the reverse of when outputs are not complemented. So getting a 0 means there is an output. That is when outputs are complemented. So actually when you should get a 1 as the output that is once complemented and comes out of the IC. Okay. So, uh, for this uh, my, uh, Dmux, suppose uh, you are giving 1, 0, 0 means what will happen? At 4, you will get a 0 and all the others you will get a 1. Right. So, in such a case, how will you implement this? Which is the gate that you can use? So that F1 should be 1. When 0, 1, 4, 6 happens at the select lines. F1 should be 1 only, not 0. But what you are getting at the output of the DMUX from these pins is a 0. When actually the 1 should have happened. So in the earlier case, OR gate was okay. But in this case, you can't use an OR gate because you'll be getting a zero uh, when the output should happen and all the others will be one. So OR gate means it will be just the reverse. So which is the gate which you can use that has the property that if at least one of the inputs is a zero, my output is one. You are going to use a gate who, whose inputs will be connected to the output of this outputs of this Dmux and when there is an output you will get a 0 from that particular output and when a 0 comes up this gate output should be 1 right. In the case of OR gate, what was it? When one, at least one of the inputs becomes a 1, the output should be 1. In this particular case, when at least one of the inputs is a 0, the output should be 1. Because in the case of non, uh, not complemented outputs, you will get a 1 only at one point. One of the outputs. All the rest will be 0. In the case of complemented you will get a 0 at only one of the outputs. All the rest of the outputs should be, will be 1. So which is the gate that you can use whose output is 1 when at least one of the inputs. One input is 0 means output is 1. So what is that? That is a NAND gate. So what is the input to NAND gate? 0, 1, 4, 6. Rest is the same, only difference is the gate 0, 1, 4, 6. And the other function, so this is F1 and F2 is 2, 6, 2, and 6. This is my F2. Okay. So, 0, 0, 0 means this will be 0. All the other outputs will be 1. So, a 0 comes to the input of this uh, NAND gate. So, F1 will be 1. F2 will be 0 because all the inputs of F2 will be 1. 
when 6 happens 1 1 0 when 6 happens what what happens 6 will be 0 output of uh, this this point will be 0 so f2 will be 1 and that 6 goes to this NAND gate also so here also you will get a 1 so if you are using a DMUX to solve an SOP with complemented outputs use NAND gate without complemented outputs use a OR gate in some questions it will be specified that the outputs are complemented or not complemented if it's not specified you can take it however you like uh, but then if you are taking it as complemented or not complemented just write a line that the outputs are complemented so we are using like this or the outputs are not complemented so we are using this particular gate so that is demultiplexer